So the AC in my house broke. It's kind of warm here. My dog, one of my dogs had a tiny accident in the house while we were at work and uh, well, the Roomba found it before we did. And then Amazon sends me six cans of expensive primer, but it's the wrong color and that's important. But hey, I started painting Starboost. guys what's up welcome to my channel I'm Frank and it is the mark 39 update video whatever number this is because again I don't keep track of this stuff because I'm lazy sorry and believe it or not after over two years since I started this project thanks Instagram for reminding me um, I'm finally sanding and priming and painting Starboost it's in the garage for paint this is amazing and there's a lot going on. I have most of the suit sanded and primed, but I definitely have parts in every different stage. And I wanna walk you through that sanding, painting, priming process that I'm going through with Starboost because if you noticed all these cool little hexagons, it's been a very popular question you guys have been asking. How am I gonna sand all of these? If you saw my TikTok, you'll already know the answer to that, but hey, strap in. There's a lot of techniques I've improved upon ever since making my Mark 85. So uh, yeah, let me get out of this thing and we'll get started. So first off the bat, I want to talk about sanding because that has been the biggest question people have been asking. All these cool little hexagons, they're awesome and great, but sanding in between them is just going to be a nightmare, so I'm not doing that. These are all getting painted a dark gunmetal color, which I will show you in a minute and we'll talk about it, but it helps hide those layer lines that might be hiding in there a lot better. And you're not really gonna notice them. And this will be a reoccurring trend through Starboost's build. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, guys. Like, this doesn't need to be a professional movie quality, fully accurate Iron Man suit. Like, it's a cosplay costume, some things can slide. I'm not saying just take it off the printer, hit it with some gold spray paint, call it a day. Definitely put some work into it, but all these little lines, it's not gonna matter. You're not gonna see them unless you're right up close to it. And if somebody's this close to you at a Comic-Con, stranger danger. So for sanding this thing, I'm using two primary methods. Uh, my palm power sander, old reliable here, and then just hand sandpaper. And that's really it. On top of, you know, some uh, filler putties, which I'll show you in a sec, um, that's all I'm going over this with. Luckily, all of these hexagon spots, these, these thermal panels or reflect, whatever you want to call them, um, they're all really flat and they're all level. It's just a recessed pattern where it used to be a flat pattern and then they extruded the hexagon pattern out of it. So as you're going over it with sandpaper, even the power sander, you're knocking down all the top hexagons, but you're not losing any of this really nice deep detail. Like you don't have to worry about it at all. Smooth the front and then you don't see any of the layer lines in between it anyway. I was able to absolutely blow through tons of Starboost parts because aside from the hexagon patterns, the suit's relatively smooth, so I was able to just use my palm sander to smooth everything down, and then I was off to priming. I'm using two different grits on my power sander. I'm starting with a 40 grit on those really, really rough, bad layer line spots, usually spots that have um, you know support support remnants. But if they're if it's just a smooth print, which most of Starboost came out pretty good, I'm starting with 120 grit because this is just knocking down those very fine layer lines, and then it's immediately ready for primer. Okay, I lied. Not immediately. After I do the power sanding and kind of uh, get it down with that 120, I will take a little sheet of 220 grit and I'll kind of just rub over the sanded parts because sometimes when you're using a palm sander, some of the edges can get a little bit of buildup from the, uh, the plastic. Um, it's not melting or ruining the edges. There seems to be some myths about power sanding uh, that can ruin details and edges. That's a lie, or if, I mean, if you're bad at it, that's fine. Um, but you practice and get better at it, and then that doesn't happen. So I'll just take 220 and rub over it real quick, and then it goes into primer. But this is the highest grit I use uh, before primer, and it's great. You can see here the front of Starboost, the front uh, chest plate. This is all done and ready to go. I was able to knock down these smooth spots, the flat spots really well. And I did put a little bit of extra time into the front hexagons. This is the front of the suit, so I want this to look the best. But you can see back here, I'm still working on the jetpack because there were really bad supports here. So this is taking a lot more work. I am using a little bit of filler primer here, or a lot of filler primer. And then I'm using some Bondo spot putty, which I'll talk about in a sec, because I'm trying to blend this line in, make this all one piece so this spot right here is literally what's going to get most of the filling and sanding on Starboost because I was able to print almost everything else out in one piece the chest plate if you remember I was able to print in like nine different pieces and then fuse them all together so that helped a lot 
You can still see back here, there's definitely some more work to be done, um, but like the backpack is the most complicated part to sand. I'm just taking my time with it. You can see here, I have a bunch of miscellaneous parts and I also have the abs and a bunch of other plates down there. All I have left to sand and prime is the legs. Um, so what is that? One, two, three, four, five. Um, 10 parts really. Uh, the thighs are kind of beefy, so that is gonna take a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. So again, I did that same method. I just ran over the um, the palm or the back plate cover, hand cover, whatever you wanna call it, sue me. Uh, I ran over it with the 60 grit, then I hit it with the 120, and then I hit it with the 220, and now it's primer. This is the Duplicolor, rust or, uh, Duplicolor filler primer, and what I'm upset about is that I got a new pack of it off Amazon, and if you come over here, this is the gray stuff, and the gray stuff isn't the oxide stuff, this stuff it's good, but the red's better. I just don't like the gray stuff. Okay, so real quick, I am working on a new uh, sanding tutorial for prepping 3D prints, um, but I wanna show you on just this raw knee print, uh, the difference that the power sanding makes and then the disc. So I'm just gonna go through the whole sequence on this to show you the stages. Starting with a 60 grit, I'm gonna go medium pressure, um, a little more than the weight of the sander. Now already it's pretty smooth, but you can see there's two pretty big layer lines left through it. Now with the power sander, I can sit and hover over those spots carefully back and forth and I can pretty much make those disappear, but the whole thing's still pretty rough. Okay, that is much better. That's, as, uh, that's pretty much as smooth as I'm gonna get it with the 60 grit and the trick to the power sander or 40 grit, um, you just need to move around. If you sit in the same spot too long, you're gonna heat it up and it's gonna melt. So now, I'm gonna, now I have two options. I can hit this with the 120, but since I know this is so flat, I'm gonna jump right up to the 220 by hand. That right there is beautifully smooth and then you're gonna start to develop a way to feel for this. Um, you'll know if it's ready for primer, if you can kind of feel it. This is very smooth plastic already. Now I could go up to a higher grit. I could go to a three something, a five something. I can even start wet sanding, which we'll talk about in another video, um, but I don't need to. I know how my primers react. So I'm just gonna go and hit this with some filler primer and that'll pretty much be it for the priming stage. But before that, I'm gonna go and do the rest of the kneecap. I'm actually not even gonna use the filler primer on this because it came out so smooth. I'm just gonna use the normal sandable red primer and we'll see how it looks like probably by the end of this video. Now, granted, this is still a wet coat and when it dries, I am gonna hit it with another like round of like maybe 220, even 320 sandpaper, but immediately from there, I'm gonna apply my base coat of color, but I don't need to sand this like as a 3D print anymore. It's, uh, it's on its way to being painted. So yeah, this stuff's pretty awesome. Okay, another big question through all of this is what if you start sanding pieces and parts and you start to lose some of that detail? Now, I'm not worried about the hexagons, but then you have lines like in here. I have a couple tricks for this. First, you can look into a panel scriber tool, and this is made for model making to let you cut in your own lines. However, if you take the back end of like a knife that kind of has the tip broken off, the back end of an X-Acto knife or razor, you can actually go through and drag it back through these lines. And you can be as careful with this as you want, but this will clean out those lines, deepen them back up and give you that detail back. So if you're starting to be worried about losing some of that detail, just go ahead and drag something like this through it. I was actually able to make my own little uh, pit tool out of a little booger picker thing. So this way I can kind of scrape up and have a little bit more control over that. I'm actually working on a Black Panther mask and this has been crucial, though I can't use filler primer on this because I'll lose a lot of the detail, just from adding paints and primers, I've had to go back over this a few times and drag my tool back through some of these lines just to keep the detail there. So it helps a lot to have a little technique like this just to pull those lines back out. The other thing I've started using is Bondo Spot Putty. I think you guys have known this for a little while now. I couldn't really get this good of a uh, product over in England, but now that it's here, it's been great. I just have this blocked out because it, it, the, the thing broke open. Um, and shout out to Offer 3D for introducing me to Upol, uh, Upol, Upol, fantastic glazing putty. I guess this stuff's even better and cheaper. I just haven't used it yet, but I am excited to try this out. 
Anyway, all this stuff does, it's filler. It's, it's liquid filler primer. It's great. It's great for layer lines. It's great for filling gaps. Um, just don't leave the cap off too much. You can see here, I actually have a hole in the bottom of this, this mask. And I'm actually gonna use this stuff to start filling this in and cut that detail back in. So just kind of glob it on there. And it might take a few rounds of me uh, putting it over top of this. But again, this is spot putty made for kind of exactly this. So I'm not too worried about it. But then if you have a bunch of layer lines, you can literally just kind of smooth this over and sand it off. Now, this is gonna cost material, right? You're gonna need to buy enough glazing putty to start covering masks and spreading it around and sanding. Personally, I don't like covering entire parts in this stuff. I'd rather just sand it down. I already have the sandpaper and electricity, in, in my opinion, is much cheaper than having to buy this stuff all the time. And then you're sanding it off, creating a lot of different chemical dust. So you just gotta be careful with this stuff. It's a trade-off. This may be quicker, but again, it's probably gonna end up costing a little bit more. So now let's talk about color. Now, I kind of covered this in my last video, um, and there's still one little secret I don't want to reveal yet to the final paint job um, until Star Boost is done. So uh, sorry about that, but you guys will just have to coat. Um, I started painting the helmet. Now this isn't DO3D's helmet. I scrapped that because Walsh 3D came out with this beautiful um, modular, multi-face plated, inner detailed helmet. It's free, I will link that down below, so go check that out. It is uh, in much better shape than DO3Ds, uh, and it, I, I think it all fits on an Ender 3, which is great. But I started painting this, and because of all the pieces that slot into it, it it's I love it, it's fantastic. So I have this gunmetal color back here, um, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this. This isn't the color I used on the other helmet. That was an oil rubbed bronze. This is a metallic black stainless. This is actually the dark color I used on my suit, my Mark 85. I might try to go and find that oil rubbed bronze because I like that a lot better. Um, but I, I definitely don't hate, oh, I got dust on it. I definitely don't hate this color, um, especially this color contrast. And I, I think, let's see, let that focus. I think that looks great. It's nice and reflective. It's, a, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. And again, look, look, I didn't sand in between them. And if you can tell, let me know in the comments down below and you know, the comments do it. So yeah, I like that. Um, I haven't got any gold pieces done yet. Those are still in work. I have nowhere to put this. I guess I'm stuck with it. Uh, it's still a little tacky, so I can't really put it down. Um, anyway, I am planning on using probably my same Rust-Oleum gold. I might experiment with some I want a more metallic mirror finish gold, but I really don't want to do this with an airbrush. Even though I have an airbrush, I don't know, maybe I should just bite the bullet on it. There's not a lot of gold on Starboost, but then I need to break out the airbrush. But then there's a lot more masking. I don't even know if I want to do that. I think I just want to do this with like this rattle cans because I've gotten this far and this I don't know, what are they going to think? Anyway, I'll figure that out once the time comes. Um, I am currently doing the faceplate, so this is the gloss black. However, it, there was a little bit of a failure on the gloss bl black paint down here. Uh, it looks it looks all right. I could hit this with some gold, it would be fine, um, but I want this to be better. Since there isn't a lot of gold on Star Boost, I want the gold that's there to be just perfect. I really want it to be even better than my Mark 85. Um, so we will get there, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the paints I'm using. Um, yeah, the Rust-Oleum gold. Um, this is perfect match, original Toyota, white pearl, and it's, it's it's beautiful. It's it's like it's the pearl white I, I've always imagined Starboost having, um, and then with the standard Duplicolor 1K clear coat, just the same thing I have on all my props. Uh, you can't. I, I've yet to find a better clear coat in a can that isn't like a two-part catalyzer. So yeah, extreme gloss finish. Um, I'm definitely gonna hit it with a few more coats, but I'm already thrilled about how this is coming out. Obviously, I'm not painting the spots that you aren't gonna see. Like, why would I do that? That's weird. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's a really nice pearl. I think it looks like a, a metal pearl right now. So, oh, excited. Also, I did paint the uh, arc reactor that's gonna go under the suit. Now, it's not perfect. I could have definitely sanded it longer, but I'm really more worried about the dimensionality of it because it's a stacked piece. It has one, two, three pieces, and it's gonna sit behind the chest so as all the light reflects inside of it, I think the chrome is just gonna give it such a cool look. Um, oh wait, actually, hold on. Yeah, it's gonna be something like that. Oh wow, I can already tell on the camera. That's gonna be so sick, especially when it lights up. Ooh buddy, nice. All right guys, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. There isn't much to show off in this stage. It's literally just hitting the grind and sanding everything, priming it, getting all the color on. The next update video I'm trying to aim for is um, 
me masking all like the final details and the paint off. I'm, I'm excited to mask off the chest because it has a lot of cool details. I'm also adding a lot of special details to this suit. And I will be releasing a Mark 39 helmet tutorial on explaining the differences in building Walsh 3D's Mark 39 and why I had to print the small faceplate. And it's a lot more difficult to print the uh, big one piece faceplate than imagined. He is working on revising the files, which is great. But this is such a cool, Everything, like, just go get this file and print it. This is probably one of the best Iron Man helmets to practice on, just to print it, because all the parts are already installed. You just screw everything together. It's great, and it's free. Like, what the heck? Also, stay tuned for a tutorial on this thing. Um, this is not, this is um, DO3D's uh, uh, um, Black Panther helmet, and I am working on it. I really want to get it done by November, and it's coming along pretty nicely. Still some things to touch up, and I'm excited about this, so. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it might be a good time to do it because I have a lot of sweet builds coming out. And this way you guys can stay up to date on all of the cool content coming out, like, you know, Black Panther helmets. And also, I didn't get a chance to talk about it, but I've started experimenting with flexible PLA. This isn't TPU, it's PLA, printable, flexible PLA. And I'm working on painting it. Um, I already got a coat of gold on it. There's no sanding or priming that goes into this, unfortunately. So I do have to do some more experiments, but this is the uh, inner arm cover for Starboost. And it's pretty cool stuff, but I just don't know if it's thin enough and good enough to use as joint covers, but there'll be more on this in another video as well. I have a lot of experimenting to do. This is um, F Flexible PLA by Ataraxia Art, and I there's another company that also makes some on Amazon. Just search, search Flexible PLA, you'll find it. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please drop them down below. I'll answer any questions you would like me to. And uh, thank you for staying so patient with Star Boost. I'm so excited to be in this final stage of it because I'm trying to take it to Silicon San Jose, a uh, Silicon with Adam Savage in San Jose. I'll be going at the end of this month, August 27th, 28th, and 29th. I will have my own booth in the makerspace with like, um, the Hacksmith and Props to History and Evil Ted and all of these awesome makers. Uh, Joel, 3D Printing Nerd, like so many amazing makers are gonna be there. I cannot wait. So if you're in the San Jose area, please go check that out. Uh, it's been a year since I attended. That was my first con with the suit and now I'm invited back as a guest. Like this is so cool. So thank you so much guys for your support. Thank you for everything. Um, thank you for being awesome. And thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good day.